Today, we will try to understand why social science doesn't offer us any loves. To get what I'm saying, let's take a look at very famous social science findings and what their names have in common. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs Theory, Freud's Psychoanalytic Theories, Bloom's Taxonomy Framework, and if you look at other social or psychological suggestions, you are very likely to see the words framework, generalization, hypothesis, or theory terms attached to them. Social science doesn't have established laws like other fields of science do. This is what we are focusing on today. But why? Um, why can't social science be like the other cool guys? Let's briefly look at the three stages of findings first. While doing research, we generally come across these three terms that classify the solidness of our findings. Hypothesis, theory and law. A hypothesis is when there is a subject and you have an idea about it. It can happen before or after you conduct your research. A hypothesis is very much what you believe about the subject. A hypothesis will become a theory when you have logical and observable proof of it. You are likely to retrieve somewhat close results when you conduct your research in different places with suitable tests. It can be observed in other parts of the world and you can use your findings to create some sort of a framework that explains why this happens. A theory will become a law when, no matter how many times you make the same test, the results you'll get will be the same, no exceptions. Laws are always capable of predicting exactly what will happen when variables change. Now, have you ever heard something about the human psyche that works perfectly on every single person? Is there a rule you can think of that is so perfect that you can use it to explain behaviors of each individual? So far, there is none. When you look at the language acquisition field, you'll see question marks flying around because we don't have one rule that explains everything. The psychology field is filled with countless theories and therapy methods because there isn't something that covers all questions perfectly. No matter what we do, there will always be exceptions, and laws do not allow that. For that, the field of social science isn't even interested in producing laws. We mostly want to figure out patterns that will make things clearer. Many of us believe that there is never a single answer for something. We don't have to be like the cool guys, I mean, we are too hot for that. To look at why we have so many variables, we can start with human unpredictability, perhaps the closest thing we have to allow. While the rest of the science works on inanimate objects, unliving structures and unfeeling forces, social science tries to understand something that doesn't even understand itself. In social science, you cannot break something into pieces and investigate them one by one. When you're working on social science, you have to consider it as a whole. Humans are unpredictable. There are way too many factors that affect the way they behave and think, or freedom brings chaos along. Also, ethnics thankfully limits many forms of research that harm people, but this also means the results we will get can never be documented as sharply as other fields of science can. I mean, you could try throwing ethnics out of the window, but the results you'll get will automatically be unnatural, which doesn't make any sense at all if you're trying to understand the nature of human psyche. Anyway, this was it from me, and I'd like to see what everyone else thinks about this. Are there laws in the social science field? If so, please do enlighten me. Because looking at how things are going, I feel like the only law we can point out is the unpredictability of humans. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.